Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're going to be jumping down into the world of XRP, reviewing the price action and where I think things are heading from a technical analysis standpoint, reviewing the latest news for XRP and taking a look at any potential trading opportunities. As I get into today's video, if you are watching this on YouTube and you do find it useful and informative, smash that like button. I do appreciate that. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and tap the bell. By tapping the bell and selecting all the notifications, you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. If you're watching it on Twitter, make sure you follow and you give this a retweet. Really do appreciate that. Help spread the content to more like-minded individuals. Let's go ahead and jump right down into today's video, starting to reflect on the one-hour time frame for XRP. So we've got an interesting potential structures here for XRP. We are in, uh, at least from a smart money concepts point of view, a bullish structure on the one hour time frame. OK, we can see this move to the upside here. We can see the breakdown and we are looking for a move and a break to the upside at some point in the future there. OK, that's probably something to talk more about on the daily time frame than the hourly. But our structures are here, uh, these micro ones on the uh, one hour time frame that kind of get leading things uh, or kind of building things up into those kind of bigger positions. Right. So it's good to see. We also see this area down here uh, between 61. 1.44 and 62.67. Uh, this is the area where we're finding demand at the moment. It's quite broad uh, on the hourly chart and not so broad when we take a look at it from a daily point of view. Ultimately, we have a local low at the moment at 62.302. Um, and we have found upper resistance on our 200 EMA, right? Our 200 EMA has basically just smacked the price down twice. Now, since we tried to push for it, it hasn't really been happening. This is a bearish tell, unfortunately. The current price action at the point of recording in this video is below the 50 EMA, which is the red line. And the red line of the 50 EMA is below the 200 EMA, basically sim symbolizing to us that the short term price action is lower than the long term price action. And the price currently is below both of those lines, which is actually a pretty bearish thing to be looking at. So we probably do have to move down before we can move on up. However, things are gearing up quite nicely. Uh, in here, we can see some interesting patterns within data. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at those. Let's just zoom in on these current moves, right? We know that we have a completed structured move to the upside here. We probably are looking for a bounce up towards equilibrium as we look at the structure here for a bounce upwards before breaking back down. And this will ultimately be part of, I think, a bigger move, which would be A, B, and C like that. Um, and that's not the right one. Let's go ahead and choose the right tool for the job. Um, it'll be A, B, and then coming down here into C, right? Ultimately, this is, gives us these kind of three wave patterns that are just kind of really boring. We've been stuck in this ranging market, but I suspect we are likely to lose the 62.302 um, uh, kind of in the coming days, right? Uh, ultimately, I suspect we have to move up a little ways towards equilibrium, which will put us about 63.15 to about 63.26, somewhere up in that range. If we do, of course, break above any of these local highs, that's going to be our breakout structure, which can give us confidence and uh, the move to the upside, right? There's a couple of different ways of looking at it. And I do wonder to myself, are we in some kind of triangle based pattern here, uh, which is a possibility. If we kind of remove that one from the equation here, what do we see? Well, we could see a potential triangle. If we have a three wave pattern coming down here, we would have a three wave pattern coming to the upside over here, a potential three wave down. Uh, it's really hard to see. I don't think we've maybe not finished this one yet. It's hard to say for certain um, because we are gearing up for uh, a potential break upwards. And that would be very interesting to me. And um, so if we have completed this little move here, I'm going to take it to a 15 minute just for the clarity on this. It is, uh, in fact, um, let me just kind of get my bearings on it. Um, we are, of course, talking three up. Yeah, let's be talking about this one here. Um, so it's this move. We have one, two, and then three. I just want to do some sense checks on there. That looks a little on a steeper side than you would normally expect it, but actually it's not too bad. Um, so yeah, I'd say that is a three wave pattern. So let's bring this back up into our hourly. That means that they do have a three wave drop here from the high here, here, and then down here. Okay, three waves in itself, just really, really tight on the B wave structure. Um, and then we move up in a three wave pattern. This is all going to make a lot more sense in a moment, guys, honestly. Uh, we have a three wave pattern going up and then we have this move coming down here and this would be our E wave. So uh, let's go ahead and draw in our triangle. So our triangles uh, will be connecting here uh, down across these highs. We're going to just draw them in. Uh, we're just going to draw in the trend line to kind of symbolize what it is that's going on. And we'll draw in here, right? So we can see that we're coiling up into this, not a, a steep um, contracting triangle or anything like that, but we can see it right inside here. Let's go ahead and find the correct tool for the job, which would be an A, 
B, C, D. This is E. The E wave is unpredictable because it can be so many different structures. So we have to be a little bit cautious. And if this is the case, then what led into the triangle would be basically what determines us to um, to be thinking about, you know, the direction. And in this particular case, what led into the triangle was a move to the downside uh, here. Uh, so we would expect a break um, down, right? But that's not where this triangle is currently placed. Instead, this triangle was, is in a strange location. Um, and the reason for that is that we have this E down here, right? Um, we have this uh, low point, which also is uh, something to consider as a potential. So let's go ahead and tidy that out just a little bit, because I do not think that's necessarily where this is actually going to be landing. Uh, if we actually take the rules of Elliott Wave Theory rather than trying to make something fit, let's go ahead and draw this in. Uh, it would look to me like we'd have to complete our C wave structure here, meaning that we cannot have a triangle, uh, at least not a triangle in that kind of sta standard way that you'd expect it to. In this particular case, uh, if the E was at the bottom, we'd have a break upwards, but the trend that led into the triangle would have been a move to the downside. So if that is the case, then what else is going on, right? If we apply those rules, is it a triangle? Is it not a triangle, right? It can still be a triangle if this is a giant A wave um, and we come down here with the A. So the A is over here. The triangle is in fact the B and then we break on down into the C. That would be how you would look into that one. And um, so that's an interesting kind of structured point right in there, right? If we are in this triangular pattern or this continuation pattern, uh, and it is a triangle, then that's where we have to look. Now, what would that do for our A, B, C, D, E, right? Uh, we'd have our A wave here, a B wave here, C. This puts us in D, looking for a break upwards into the E. And if that is the case, then you do get that breakdown. And that would actually line up with a move up towards equilibrium within the pattern and potentially bring us on down a little bit deeper. A little bit more complex, something to kind of think about if we can, if we do in fact see this move and we do in fact break up there, then we will be targeting out those lower ranges as kind of expected with that kind of 59 cent level on the large time frames. But this is a complicated one, so it's going to be open for a lot of potential error. And um, so for now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to monitor the situation where we are right here and see whether or not we end up with that. If we do tap into that 200 EMA again and get rejected, I think that's going to be your short opportunity because I suspect that that is probably going to be the last opportunity uh, for a significant short before we can go long on the market. So it'd be interesting to kind of keep an eye on that. Let's go ahead and move this up into the daily time frame because we are looking for a break upwards. We're not looking for a break to the downside here uh, immediately on the kind of daily time frame. We actually are looking for a move up first towards 69 to 71 cent. So on the hourly time frame, we have a lot of volatility. We see lots of kind of movements in the space. Um, where we see a lot of overlapping structures in that continuation-based pattern currently where we sit. However, the structures on our daily time frame are actually telling us that we should be expecting a move to the upside. So we might see a small amount of volatility on the hourly chart, um, but ultimately, I think the direction that we're really looking for is going to be this long up towards the 69 to 71 cent. Uh, we've got the momentum to support this as well. So although there's a lot of complexities with those really micro movements on the hourly chart, the daily is quite clear to us is a long position here potentially on the horizon for XRP and it's got some pretty decent potential to it. So for example, we can see it's a good 10% move and 10% using leverage is also going to be a pretty significant amount of profit to be made within that pattern. So I think for the most part, we'll keep a close eye on the hourly chart, but it looks like we have a pretty decent way of doing uh, a long position on XRP. For example, if we were to take market value right now, we put this below the swing low of the Y wave, we put this uh, take profit on the 69 cent range and you can see it's a risk reward ratio of 2.1. One. Yes, it might be in negative numbers because you've not got the best entry here, but in terms of like a long position, it's looking pretty good. But we'll talk more about that as we kind of get into the trade areas later in the video. Move this up into the weekly time frame. All you really are talking about here is a macro move down to that 52 to 58 cent area. We talk about this pretty much every day. It's nothing unusual. We are looking for that bounce on the daily, and then we're going to look to come down. So again, we short from that 69 cent area, and we look to come down towards 58 cent. Again, some more profit to be made. Uh, by basically listening to what the data is suggesting to us and making sure that we use proper risk management with our trading and stuff like that. Now, from a weekly standpoint, we're correcting down quite nicely on our stochastic. So a little move to the upside isn't going to really do too much to that. It can be one to two days, whatever it is. 
Um, and, you know, this is stuff that's going to take weeks and to months to play out. But for the most part, we will be looking for this move to the downside where we look to find support on the 50 EMA, which was previously resistance. Ultimately, the weekly 50 EMA is currently sat at 51 cent. I think and by the time we actually start to move on down here, that 50 and 200 EMA is going to lift up a little bit. And it's going to line up quite nicely with our targeted range of previous resistance where they say uh, where this will turn into an area of support. So ultimately, resistance turns to support. And I think that is ultimately where we're going to find XRP between 52 and 58 cent, a good support range. And that's really where we can then go long on the market on a weekly time frame, which will be pretty potent in itself. Let's go ahead and take this up into some data and news. Um, so we'll kick things off by taking a look at some of the on-chain data that we have on our website, membership.cheekycrypto.io. We do offer a seven-day free trial. Um, of course, if you don't want to continue after your seven-day free trial, make sure you go to your profile and cancel the subscription. If you do not cancel it, you will be charged on the 8th day. Um, so there's many different benefits, everything from trading through to videos, technical analysis, uh, alerts and accumulation zones, various different things. You can check this out at your leisure linked in the description below on YouTube and in the link tree on X if you haven't already checked that out. We're going to be jumping over into the data zone for XRP. We're going to load that up. Uh, we can see the overarching stats here for XRP. Uh, we can see that we've had 1.3 million transactions in the last 24 hours at a cost of 1,400 just for shits and giggles and because it's me. I'm going to compare this to Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum's data here, when this loads up for one second, we can see had a million transactions at $5.1 million in fees. So we know what's good and what's bad. Well, I mean, paying fees to do transactions on Ethereum is bad. Uh, for XRP, it's non-existent. We know that the actual fees that are paid on XRP are significantly cheaper. And it's basically demonstrating to everybody in black and white that you can have uh, your cake and eat it if you have it on XRP. So designed to move money around the world and to basically make it really cheap and affordable and also really incredibly efficient, XRP is delivering on that promise. And so from a fundamental standpoint, we can see very much in black and white data here that it's doing a very, very good job at moving money around. The average transaction value is $1,800 and the average fee is 0.0017 of an XRP. Um, so very, very cheap. Taking a look at the liquidation side of things, though, uh, we can see $498,000 of liquidations on XRP in the last 24 hours. Uh, the exchange with the most amount of liquidations, astonishingly, is Bybit at $221,000. Okay, 55.79% of positions were long positions that were liquidated, 44.21 were short positions. Positions. We can see that Bybit is 44% of all liquidations, Binance is 34%, OKX is 15%, Horby is 4%, and after that, really non existence. Um, so, yeah, really interesting kind of things to be looking at here. Um, from the data side, we won't go into the wallets today, um, but again, you can have access to this if you become a member over at membership.cheekycrypto.io. Moving over into the news, here's some interesting stuff for you. Super bullish for Bitcoin, XRP, and Shiba Inu. I think these are just like dropping various different things into the title to see if they can get some views and clicks and whatnot. But ultimately, some interesting stuff within this uh, article in itself, which is basically um, a former SEC attorney anticipates Gary Gensler's possible departure. We've been talking about this for months. We do think that he should do the right thing and resign. Um, I think no matter what, though, it will always be wrapped up as a resignation when the reality is he'll probably be fired for being uh, an absolute douche. Now, I, I say a joke, of course. Um, he is, of course, you know, really bad at his job. Um, he doesn't understand uh, the security laws very well and doesn't understand cryptocurrency. Uh, and um, well, I say he doesn't understand cryptocurrency. I mean, there's the speeches where he's talking about things not as securities. And then the next thing, you know, uh, his puppet master is telling him it must be a security and he must go ahead and file all these lawsuits and so forth. Ultimately, he's not done his job justice. His job is to protect retail investors and all Gary Gensler and all his former uh, heads uh, that were before him have, have basically done the same thing. They have basically looked out for themselves. They are corrupt individuals who, in my opinion, need to go to jail. They need to see some significant jail time. They need to have their assets stripped. And um, the billions of dollars worth of damage done to retail investors because of these uh, these criminals, um, should uh, there should be compensation. There should be uh, lawsuits, class actions filed against the individuals for their poor leadership, and they need to be held accountable. That's my two cents on it. You can let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments down below. 
But ultimately, uh, there's rumours and rumblings uh, that he might be about to depart. And uh, reports have emerged that the current SEC chair, Gary Gensler, might be leaving the regulatory agency and is set to be replaced by uh, Hester M. Pierce, which we obviously know. Um, Pierce's uh, nickname is Crypto Mum, uh, demonstrates how she is widely celebrated in the crypto community. So this is, again, speculation we don't know, but it'd be interesting to see whether or not this does come to fruition. I think that's a good change. Um, again, we'll see if the puppet master likes such a change or not. Um, of course, there's going to be many things to kind of consider with this one. Um, ultimately, from other kind of news and things like that, we can see, you know, there's not really a lot going on in uh, the XRP news from the kind of, you know, you today or uh, news flash or coin telegraph and things like that um some interesting kind of fud and noise around amazon partnerships all of that is absolute garbage it's been around for years it's an aws which is the uh the the basically the hosting provider the cloud hosting provider uh, not amazon the web uh, e-commerce short store, right? Uh, there's different forms of businesses and essentially the partnership is really loose. It's basically Ripple are using AWS and, and so therefore this kind of thing comes out. It's been around for years. It gets rehashed, regurgitated and redistributed with uh, photoshopped images and whatnot. Don't pay attention to it. It's not true. It's all there just designed to create FOMO, uh, to try to create pumps in the market so that people can sell into the pump and liquidate and grab liquidity out of the market. Market. Do not buy into it. Understand uh, if you can't verify it yourself from reputable sources, chances are it's just a photoshopped image on X, right? Um, so from a news point of view, that is what that is. Nothing else going on. Let's go ahead and jump over into the side of um, exchanges, right? Because there's many different exchanges. As we were talking about, uh, we saw liquidations right across very several different exchanges: Bybit, Binance, OKX, Horby, and so forth. Right, BitGet is my go-to platform. You can buy XRP on spot there. You can also use uh, leverage. Personally, I'm 100% leverage through BitGet, and um, I am 90 to 95% spot buying uh, on BitGet as well. Right, it's my go-to platform. I use it pretty much every single day. Now, there are of course many exchanges where you can buy and trade XRP. And the best thing to do, guys, is essentially get registered with as many as possible. So if you haven't yet signed up to BitGet, why not check it out? The affiliate link is down in the description below. But if you do use that link, you are eligible for up to $8,000 of the rewards, depending on how much you deposit and trade on the platform. Just understand the risks associated with trading. Uh, do test out some paper trading and stuff like that. Join us down in Discord for more details. Uh, of course, there's other links in the description as well. Bybit, Binance, uh, you know, Crypto.com. There's so many, right? And we're, we've got more links down in the discord than we can fit in the description down below so why not join us down in discord if you haven't done so already and check out what's available offer wise across these various different platforms depending on the countries uh, that you're in trading volumes um, and all that kind of stuff so lots of things to kind of think about when it comes to exchanges but it's important that you could do set yourself up for success in the future you don't want to just rely on one exchange and then all of a sudden that one has liquidity problems becomes insolvent or maybe is down because there's just so much demand at the point in time right when xrp gets gets going, where are you going to liquidate it? Where are you going to be selling your XRP? Does it a single exchange that you're planning to use? You might want to make sure you have backups of your backup of your backup just in case, because when it gets going, it's going to get crazy. Let's jump on down into the trading elements though, right? Because as I said earlier, there's a few trading opportunities in here. Okay, so on an hourly chart, if we really wanted to be trading all of those micro movements, there is going to be a long opportunity, in my opinion, right now, uh, at least at the point of recording this video, it's probably going to be a little bit late by the time uh, this video actually goes out. We'll be testing out the equilibrium here. We'll put a stop loss below the swing low. It's not the best risk reward rate. 1.6 with a stop loss of 62.3 and an entry at about 62.6 with take profit at 63.1. It's a possible trade idea. It's not one that I think I would personally do. On the daily time frame, we have a much clearer structured move where, as I said earlier, what we can do is on an entry position here, market value, stop loss just below the Y swing low, and then take profit on the low side of our um, target range here. This is going to give us a 1.95 risk reward ratio. This is going to be something that's probably going to last 
last several weeks. It's not something that's going to happen instantaneously. Um, you've got good risk reward ratio, good balancing. We're not likely to lose the Y wave just yet. And um, we do see potential growth in XRP. So this is going to be one of those trade ideas that we might be able to execute on, right? And then, of course, once we're up in these high ranges, we'll be able to short from up here with a nice stop loss above the previous swing highs and take profit down in our Z wave structure. Again, this is going to give us about 2.6. So we can trade in both directions, go long, and then once we're up in our target range, go short. And so there's going to be some fantastic opportunities from a trading point of view when it comes to XRP. Um, so I don't think this is terribly unusual. I think a lot of us can appreciate there's many different trading opportunities out there across the board. Now, if we take a look at some of the fantastic things that have happened recently um, in our Discord server for our members, we can see some really good trading opportunities and trades that have been executed. Uh, Reggie Classics has been a complete degen uh, going crazy with his leverage, but uh, has performed incredibly well, right? A Bitcoin short here at 60x, 210%. Uh, we have 1,300% on a 200x long on Shiba Inu, for example, right? So absolutely crushing it. Really proud to say that our community are crushing the trades right now. They're seeing some really good gains being made across the board. Again, if you are, haven't yet checked out membership.cheekycrypto.io, why not check it out? Linked in the description below. Become a member for seven days risk-free. Uh, of course, you can cancel using your profile at a later date as well uh, if you don't want to continue. But I think personally, for those people who do see everything that we have to offer i think you're going to be pleasantly surprised by what it is and um, maybe you'll stick around for the long term which is what we would love to see the cheeky community getting stronger and stronger i'm going to leave this video right there though guys if you have found it useful and informative smash that like button i do appreciate that if you are new to the channel why not go ahead and subscribe tap the bell select all the notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at cheeky crypto until the next one though guys have a fantastic day